welcome to another edition of The Amazing Art Show. I'm your host, Angie Woolsey, and we have an amazing project for you today. We are actually going to be doing some happy grasshoppers. So, let's go over what we're going to need for our project today. We have a long list of supplies. Pretty common supplies, but still a long list at that. So, let's talk about what we need. We are going to need some oil pastels. Um, water paints. If you can get your hands on some fluorescent water paints, that also is really good as well. Tissue paper. Um, we will need a sponge. We will need some water, paint brushes, scissors, pencils, those common kinds of things. We'll also be needing a little bit of glue. You'll need some colored large sheets of construction paper. And I think that'll do it. So I guess we are ready to get started. And we are going to start today by showing you our subject. So let's talk about our model for today, and that is going to be the grasshopper. Now, we have got several parts of the grasshopper that we kind of need to talk about because it's going to help us when we are working on our project today. So let me show you this right here. We're going to go over this, this really important part. The grasshopper is kind of divided into three different parts. So we've got the head, we've got the, that's the, beginning part, of course, and then the middle part is the thorax, and then the latter part is going to be the abdomen. So we want to, when we are constructing our grasshopper day, we're actually going to break him down into parts. That's why I've kind of broke him down into parts for you, because when we draw it today, you're not drawing it all as one cohesive piece. If you're going to do a head, a thorax, an abdomen, legs, back legs, hopper legs, Wings, all those things will be separate, and then we're going to put them together like a puzzle, okay? So, um, let's get started, and like I said, I pulled a picture because that always helps me to get started on my drawing. So, I'm going to be, you know, kind of looking at my model as we are drawing, but something that I want to tell you is this. All the time, my kids say, I don't know how to draw that, I just don't know how. So, boys and girls, I'm giving you the biggest hint in the whole wide world. Whenever you start to draw something, you need to look at it. You need to look at the shapes that you see in it and break it down into something that's familiar to you. So that's why I use shapes. So when I look at this grasshopper, I'm like, okay, let's start with this head. What kind of a shape does it look like to me? I'm thinking that kind of looks like an oval. So that's what I'm going to go with. So, you know, same kind of thing. Break it down. You're his whole body here, you could break down into another large kind of long oval. So break things down into shapes. It doesn't matter what you're drawing, whether it's a grasshopper or a car or anything. Look at the shapes that you see in it. And then you, after you draw those shapes, you can kind of bring it all together. So I'm going to start with that idea in mind today. And I am going to get started on my grasshopper. I'm going to start with my grasshopper's head. So I am going to just start out with some kind of a shape. Like I said, I've got that oval shape in mind. And your grasshopper you know, depending on whether or not you want to make him really realistic looking or if you would rather make him a little more abstract or kind of cartoonish, that's completely up to you. I think I'm going to do mine a little bit cartoonish just because I think that would be fun. So I'm going to do that and I think I'm going to do his other eye over here, kind of coming off his head a little bit and I'm going to add his mouth, and I'm going to do kind of a silly little mouth on him, so maybe something with a spiral. All right, so I've got his head. I will tell you a little hint. Whenever we put this together, we're going to need like a little tab kind of right here, so I'm just going to add that on so I don't forget about it. And then we can move on to the thorax, which is that middle part of the body, and this is kind of a hard shell, kind of acts as a shield for him. So we are going to draw that part next. And like I said, you can, if you want to, you might want to draw the thorax and the abdomen together, or if you want to, you can break it up into different pieces. I think for, the, for today, I think I'm going to draw mine starting out with the thorax. And as I'm drawing, I'm thinking about, mm, what kind of a shape does that look like? Because that helps me come up with my design. And you're going to go back and add details and things like that later. But for now, I'm just going to leave it there. I'm going to move on to 
the abdomen, which is that longer part of the grasshopper. And so I'm going to, I'm going to make his, the end of his tail kind of curl up just a little bit. Now I'm making mine pretty big. You may not want to make yours as big as mine. And if you want to go smaller, that's fine. If you want to end up doing several smaller grasshoppers and putting them into your artwork, that'll work out too. Um, I'm just kind of drawing mine big so that you can see it well and we can discuss the different parts and things like that. All right, so I've got my first parts here, my first three parts. And then the next thing that I'm going to need to do is I want to come in here and kind of add a few of those details that we talked about. So when I look on my drawing, I see this line that is kind of, it reminds me of like a curtain. And it kind of comes across here. And that helps me to know where to put all these little lines that go down his belly. All right, now, the next thing I'm going to work on is I'm going to work on his back legs, which are his hopper legs, which are the, his strongest legs that he has. And they are shaped like an upward, like an upside down V basically. And so it down at the bottom, it's got the really thick part, and then he's got those long skinny legs. And I'm going to need two of these. So you can do this two ways. You can either draw two, or if you're not comfortable with that and you can't ever get it to look exactly the same, if you want to draw one, put two pieces of paper together, and when you cut it out, you'll end up with two. We do that trick all the time. So I'm going to finish my leg, and I'm kind of breaking it down into shapes. So I've started with just this long kind of oval kind of shape again. And then I'm going to come down and do that real skinny little part of his leg. And he has got these little spiky things on his legs. So I want to make sure and add those. Those are lots of fun. And then I will add kind of his foot which is broken down into little segments. So I'm kind of looking at that as well. And then I'm going to go back in and I see that there's some, some good details in there that I definitely want to add to my work. So I am drawing those. I'm going to modify this a little bit. So it's not going to look exactly like the picture. And that is OK whenever you're doing something. Like I said, it's kind of up to you if you want to do it more realistic or if you want to kind of add your own interpretation to it, that's always welcome. All right, so, and something else you might need to think about is if you're a grasshopper, a girl grasshopper, or a boy grasshopper. So boys and girls, you need to decide if your grasshopper is a boy or a girl. And you might want to add certain details to it, you know, maybe some fancy eyelashes or maybe a beauty mark or maybe a bow tie or a hat or something like that. Maybe I, I don't know, I think mine's a boy. I'm not sure if I'm going to add anything else boyish to him yet or not, but I'm going to um, definitely be doing a boy. And all right, so we have got one leg drawn. I think I'm going to leave mine so that I can put my paper together just to save a little bit of time today. The next thing that I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be doing these middle legs here. And these are actually called the walking legs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going, once again, I'm going to need two of those. However, when I really look at this, they're not exactly the same. So I'm probably going to have to actually draw those out. And just like when we did the, the back jumping legs, I'm going, they're kind of that upside down V shape. So I'm going to do the same kind of thing. These are turned a little more towards the side. So I'm just going to look at my picture. And boys and girls, I got my picture off of the internet. I am... Um, went to just a, like a Google kind of website and I just put in grasshoppers and oh my goodness, you should have seen all the things that came up. And I got more information about grasshoppers than you could even imagine and lots of pictures and things like that. So whenever you're starting to crea create any kind of artwork, you know, use those references and look, you know, use that internet, it's great. I always like to have something to look at when I am doing my picture. And just like this jumper leg, it's got those segments again. So I'm going to make sure I add those in there. And I'm going to do another leg like that. Just kind of scoot over here to the side. And not all of this one's probably going to show because 
one's going to be behind and one will be in the front. So if it's not exactly the same, it's not that big of a deal. Let me add my segments again. And he also has those little hairy things on his legs again, so I'm going to add those. Always pay attention to those details. Always make sure artwork looks really good. All right, I am moving on to the very front legs. And these are actually shaped a little bit differently. This first one's kind of straight on. So I'm just going to kind of start with kind of a circle kind of shape up at the top. And then drop it down. And once again, it goes into those segments. And then that back one's bent. So I'm just going to stuff it in here wherever I can. And you know, if your paper gets too full and you can't fit in everything, you can always switch over to another piece of paper. I'm just trying to conserve my paper, so I'm trying to fit everything on there. All right, now once we get our grasshopper parts finished, we want to go back and check out to see if there's any other, you know, details that we might want to add. I see some that I could come in and add here on the thorax. And we will be coming in and adding color to these. And I'm actually going to kind of give you a couple options on your the way you want to add color today. You know, you might want to end up doing oil pastels. If that's, you know, if you really get into that and you really enjoy that, like I've told you before, that's one of my favorite things to do. Or you can also do your watercolor. So I'm going to kind of leave that up to you as to how you're going to do it. I will probably, in my example today, show you with oil pastels. Okay? All right, so we've got our grasshopper going here. And I'm actually going to put him to the side because now I want to talk to you about your grasshopper's habitat. All right? We've talked about habitats before. This is where your grasshopper lives. So a grasshopper, amazingly enough, can live in many, 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 many different habitats. The only place it can't live is the North and South Pole. It does not like the cold like me. So we are going to work on our grasshopper's habitat. So grasshoppers can be, you know, they could be in the tropical jungles, they could be in just a forest, they could be in your backyard, they could be anywhere. So you need to kind of think about what kind of a background you want to create? What kind of a habitat do you want to give your grasshopper? So I'm thinking that my grasshopper wants some kind of a tropical kind of, kind of a background. He looks like a tropical kind of guy to me. So I'm going to start in my picture, and I want you to also think about this. In my picture today, you know, we're going to be filling the whole piece of paper with those different types of things that you would see in the background. Keep in mind that some of those things may be smaller, some of the, those things may be drawn really, really large. Those larger things are the things that are going to be up close to you. So they're the closest thing to the viewer. That's why they're the biggest. The smaller things that you see in the picture are the things that are furthest in the distance. All right? So that talks to you a little bit about things that we deal with all the time in art as being your foreground, your middle ground, and your background. Okay? So your background are those things that are way far off in the distance, middle ground, just kind of average in the middle, and then your foreground are those things that are really big, they're the closest, okay, they're the most clear as well. All right, so I'm going to start out with my foreground because I just like drawing these leaves. And by the way, as far as your leaves go, I want you to think about this. Sometimes people, they do their leaves all the same way, and you know, it's just that kind of shape, that kind of diamond, ovally kind of shape. Hey guys, Leaves have many, 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 many shapes. If you can't think of any, go in your front yard. There are tons, all right? And get different kinds of leaves. Get blades of grass. I'm sure your mom wouldn't mind if you maybe take a few of some of the things growing in the garden. This is science that we're talking about. Tell her it's in the name of science. So get those things for you to look at because it helps you to have the things in front of you when you're drawing. Now, I do not have any of these tropical leaves in front of me, but boy, I wish I did. <laughs> so I'm going to start with just these leaves. And I also want you to remember, we've talked about it before, but we always want to try to incorporate overlapping into our picture. So I've started out with one pretty big leaf here, and I'm actually going to come in and put the other one that might be, you know, a little more underneath it. And you can work that way, or if you want to do smaller ones on top, any way is fine, just I want you to remember that overlapping because it really gives your picture some good depth. So 
So I'm going to come in here, continue with my leaves. I think this is my last tropical leaf because I don't want them to all be the same. All right. Now, I think in my picture, I'm going to add maybe some kind of a stream. So this would be more in my background. And as it kind of travels through here, since it's going off into the distance and off into the background, it's going to get smaller in appearance. So I'm going to have it get smaller as it goes up towards the top of my paper. And this is just going to be just a little stream of water. And I always like, you know, kind of adding some spirals and things. So if I was in the jungle and I saw this kind of a stream, there would more than likely be lots of plants around. And there would also be, um, you know, probably some rocks and things like that would be around. So I'm going to just add a couple of those things to my picture. And keep in mind, whenever you're adding things to your picture, you want to try, not always, but you really want to kind of keep it as a rule of thumb. You want to work with, uh, with odd numbers, not even numbers. So that's why when I did my leaves up here, I did one, two, three leaves instead of just doing the two. Okay? So think about that. It always makes your artwork look better. So I'm going to add a few more rocks in here. And then I'm going to come in and just add some other types of plant life that might grow. Maybe, you know, maybe there's some kind of a fern kind of looking plant. And look around your house because you've got plants that are, you know, growing inside your house that you could definitely take a look at. And don't forget also, I didn't really talk about it over here, but don't forget about the veins that you see in the leaves. Very essential part of, of the plant, you know, that's how it gets all of its nutrients. And so you want to make sure that you add those details. I'm always telling you guys, it's about the details. Artists are those people that can really look at things and notice the details that other people might kind of miss. They don't think they're that important, those types of things. So take the time to really stop and look at things. All right, so I've got my picture going. I think I'm going to bring maybe another leaf or two kind of coming in. Maybe it's hanging down from some kind of a plant. I could even, if I wanted to... I think I'll do like maybe a big vine kind of coming across here and it's even going to cover up a little bit of my stream. So one thing that my kids always do is they're not sure what, what do you need to erase? Well, if the vine is coming across the river, then you wouldn't be able to see through the vines, but that would be the part that you'd want to erase. So I'm just going to continue adding different kinds of leaves and things like that. You know, don't forget something else that might kind of be fun to add to your pictures. Maybe there's a little caterpillar on the vine or things like that. You can always come in and add those other little things to your picture. Add some interest. And don't forget that everything doesn't always have to face one direction. So change it up so that everything isn't the same. All right, once you get your picture all drawn, the next thing we're going to move on to is adding color. So I talked to you a little bit at the beginning of the segment about how I'm going to kind of leave that up to you as to how you want to do your color. So what I'm going to do at this point, we need to add color to our grasshopper as well as our background. As I start adding some color to my pictures, I want you guys to check out some interesting grasshopper facts. <music> Okay, so I am just about done adding color, and we're going to start cutting these things out. And I want to give you guys a couple hints about when you're starting to cut something out, especially when you put this many things on a piece of paper. It will help you out a lot if you will kind of just roughly cut around it so that you're not having to deal with all that extra paper. And um, then it's a lot easier for you to cut your shapes out. While I'm cutting this out, I want you guys to go check out some more interesting facts about grasshoppers.
hope that you guys enjoyed those interesting facts about the grasshopper. Another very interesting tip about the grasshopper is another very dangerous enemy of the grasshopper would be the shoe. So you guys need to watch out where you're walking. All right, let's get back to this grasshopper business. We have got our grasshopper. We have assembled everything. I'm gonna really quickly talk to you guys about the um, wings. Whenever you're doing your wings, that's where that tissue paper comes in. And I would suggest to you that you get kind of a good sized piece like this. If you will fold it in half, draw your shape on it of however big you want it to be. Those grasshopper wings are usually pretty long. So, you know, remember that shape thing again. So like that long kind of extended oval. And then, since you've got it folded in half, go ahead and cut it out. And then, once you get that finished, you can just come in. It takes barely any glue at all. Just put a little bit of glue, you know, just kind of right here on the, towards the thorax of the grasshopper. And then these really can just kind of lay back here. I saved my um, grasshopper leg. I did not put it on. That was the last thing that I put on. So do your wings first, then come in and put the, that back jumper leg on, okay? All right, last couple things that I wanna go over with you today are, I talked to you in the intro about that you were gonna need a pipe cleaner. We use the pipe cleaner to come in and to make the antennas and, or the little feelers for your um, grasshopper. So don't forget to add your little feelers. I will tell you this, trying to glue a pipe cleaner onto tissue paper and onto construction paper is not an easy thing. Just get a piece of tape. It will work a lot better and save you many, many headaches and lots of gluey fingers. So the next thing that I wanted to talk to you about, I had talked to you about that you might want to um, get some paint. And what I did was I ended up getting a kind of an iridescent metallic kind of a paint. And I got a sponge. Moms probably have this. You just need a little bitty snippet of it. So just real politely, just real sweet like. Say, I just need a little bitty bit. And if you'll wet that and you just barely need any of that kind of metallic looking paint, and all you're gonna do is just kind of dab that on in a couple places, and it's just gonna kind of give it that, you know, iridescent kind of shine like those grasshoppers have. So I came in, I pretty much added that a little bit everywhere, a little bit on the legs and things like that. Now, the other thing I wanted to discuss with you is that we have got our background all colored. The one thing that I've not really covered with you is that I did come in with my fluorescent paints and I also came in with just my regular tempera cakes and I did an oil resist, which means the oil from the oil pastels that we used and the water from the water paints, they react with each other and it sticks to the places where you don't have oil pastel and it repels the places where you do have oil pastel. So that's where you get these, you know, these things in here where you see the pinks kind of coming through and you see the greens. The green would be my oil pastel. That hot pink would have been my, my paint. So we call that like a, a water oil resist whenever you're creating a piece of artwork like that. So this adds a lot to your artwork though. So don't, you know, don't forget that step if you can. So let's talk about your placement of your grasshopper. Now, like I told you in the very beginning, my grasshopper is huge. He's like one of those killer grasshoppers. But if, depending on how big yours is, you need to decide where you want to place your grasshopper. And so think about those things. And then the next thing that I wanna talk to you about, once you've decided where you wanna place it, is I wanna talk to you really quick about how I want you to place it. Um, you need to find some kind of a thick kind of cardboard, and it could, be, it could be like a box that you just cut a couple pieces off of or you could get some thick paper, and you just need a couple little strips. What we're gonna do with these is kind of fold them to where your grasshopper, we don't want him to lay down flat on your piece of artwork. So if you're doing the strips of paper like I'm doing, you can kind of fold them just in a zigzag, okay? And what we're gonna do then is we're gonna end up gluing those back here and then gluing the other piece down onto here. So he's gonna stand up off of the artwork. So he's not gonna be flat, He's going to be more dimensional and stick up off of your grasshopper. So real quickly, I'm going to just do my, you know, accordion kind of zigzag fold, and it does not have to be real precise or anything like that. Um, depending on how big your grasshopper is, you might need just one or you might need two or three. So you are going to 
put some glue on here. And boys and girls, I will tell you this right now. Whenever you go to glue this down, because you have got that oil pastel on your work, the glue kind of doesn't want to stick. So you really need to kind of get it on there, get the glue on there, lay it down. And you might put a book or something on top of it just for a little bit so that it has a chance to really stick down and glue. And those little accordion things, they will pop back up once you take the book off. But that's the best way to kind of get it to stay and get it to stick and glue and things like that. So I'm going to show you kind of our finished piece today. And hopefully he won't fall off. We've got our oil resist happy grasshopper pitcher all finished. Today's art quote comes from Henry David Thoreau, an American essayist, poet, and practical philosopher. Nature will bear the closest inspection. She invites us to lay our eye level with her smallest leaf and take an insect view of its plane. Okay, boys and girls, that just about wraps us up for today. Thank you so much for joining me for another edition of The Amazing Art Show. Now go out there and make some amazing art. It doesn't have to be summer for you to get a sunburn. Dermatologists say the sun's damaging UV rays are present year-round, and whether you're raking leaves, skiing, or taking a dip, it's important to protect yourself. During colder months, doctors suggest using facial moisturizers with built-in UV protection. Be certain they have combined an SPF of at least 15 with a UV blocker. During warmer months, you may want to use sunblock that's waterproof and is made using aloe. That way it can help heal skin that's been tanned by the sun and it will stay on should you decide to go swimming or start perspiring. The sun's UV rays can wreak havoc on skin after long periods of exposure. They've been linked to wrinkles and premature aging and they've even been officially named a carcinogen by the National Institute of Environmental Health Science. Using a sunblock year-round can protect you from the rays and help you put your best face forward. Before you hit the road, you may find it wise to get around to heeding a few hints on bicycle safety. First, read your bicycle owner's manual thoroughly before riding. Next, protect your head. Wear a helmet. Make sure your bicycle is adjusted properly and always check the brakes before riding. Learn the rules of the road obey the traffic laws, and stay aware of the traffic around you. These tips will help clear the air on fire safety. First, install smoke detectors on every level of your home. Plan your escape from fire. Be sure that everyone in your family knows at least two unobstructed exits from every room. Decide on a place outside where everyone will meet after they escape. Have your entire household practice your escape plan at least twice a year. Keep an eye on smokers. Careless smoking is the leading cause of fire deaths in North America. Before going to bed or leaving home after someone has been smoking, check under and around cushions and upholstered furniture for smoldering cigarettes. Cook carefully. Never leave cooking unattended. Keep cooking areas clear of combustibles and wear clothes with short rolled up or tight fitting sleeves when you cook. If grease catches fire in a pan, slide a lid over the pan to smother the flames and turn off the heat. Leave the lid on until cool.